rules of this world has no right nor wrongs, distinguishes no good nor evil. It applies to everyone who seeks its application, regardless of their intentions, and as long as they follow all the criteria involved. And all things being equal, what the individual seek, they shall find. What's up, people of this weird planet called Earth? Welcome to episode 48 of HMIH Podcast with yours truly, Damilari Mapa. Today, I'll briefly be telling you the story of Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro. Born in Trujillo, Spain, to a poor family in 1474, Pizarro chose to pursue fortune and advantage in the new world. He was an illiterate, so he most probably learned valuable life knowledge from one informal way or the other. Before we go on, it is valid for me to define the word conquistadors in order to understand why he was named one. Conquistadors are conquerors, especially one of the Spanish conquerors of Mexico and Peru in the 16th century. So back to the influential human. Pizarro became an influential human because of his expeditions. He had various conquering expeditions throughout his lifetime, but the most important ones are the ones he did um, to Peru. Two of them failed but became well known for one very successful expedition. But before we go there, let's go through the field too. The first expedition was in November 1524 with about 80 men and 4 horses. The aim was to explore South America but this turned out to be a failure because his aides sailing down the Pacific reached no more than Colombia before hitting bad weather, lack of food and clashes with hostile natives. Pizarro then ended his first expedition and returned to Panama. Just two years later, Pizarro, um, Almagro and Luke arranged the second expedition, although it took time before it was approved. On March 10, 1526, Pizarro left Panama with two ships and 160 men and also several horses. After a series of events, Pizarro didn't end up conquering any land till he ran out of resources, so his men decided to go back home, except for 13 of them that believed in Pizarro's dream. They are called the famous 13. So he told Almagro to return to Panama with Luke for more reinforcements, but using proof of the gold they had found and news of the wealthy land they had explored. But the new governor of Panama rejected their application due to news of past failures. But he eventually approved on the condition that Pizarro return after six months if his expedition was unsuccessful and abandon it forever. But at this point, Pizarro was determined to achieve what he had set his mind on. At a point, Pizarro returned to Panama to prepare for his final expedition to Peru, that is, after about 18 months, they set for the coast of Panama for what they had been preparing for. But the new governor of Panama prevented them, so they decided to go and convince the then king, King Charles I. And they were able to eventually get the support of the king. And on the 27th of December 1530, Pizarro left for his third expedition to the South America. And this time he was lucky. With just 110 foot soldiers, 67 cavalry, three arquebuses, a type of long gun that is, and falconets, which is a type of cannon. Pizarro was able to cunningly capture the unsuspecting king who had just defeated his brother to claim control of Peru and the Inca clan. Pizarro later convicted the king named Atahaupa with 12 charges and executed him by hanging in front of his own people on 29th of August 1533 and that's how Pizarro conquered the lands of Peru well after a series of bloody warfare also but this victory was the most significant Pizarro later on founded the city of Lima on Peru's central coast on 6th January 1535 which he considered to be one of the most important things he had created in life Pizarro was one of the evident historical figures that showed that you could come from nothing and become quite influential, rich and affluent, even though his path to getting to where he reached might have been questionable. Well, as everyone will, Pizarro died. He died from a brutal assassination on 26th June 1541. But the story 
of his various expeditions, conquests, and the city he founded lives on. Well, that's it on today's episode of History's Most Influential Humans. I told you guys it was brief. Um, join us next month uh, on the first Saturday of October for the next episode of History's Most Influential Humans, guys. Till then, I hope you guys learn as much as possible from the previous episodes. Kindly follow us on our um, social media platforms everywhere, damlari underscore mapa, and send the feedback on how you thought this episode and the other ones were. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Damlari Mapa, out.